I'm your doctor, here to prescribe you what's going on with your PC stuff, and we actually got our first submission to our subreddit for the PC doctor after last week's episode. Let me diagnose you. Let me whip out my prescription pad so that I can tell you what to do. I'm a doctor. In case you're looking to travel with your PC and you want a game on the go, you should look no further than today's video sponsor, ProtoArg, and their XKO1 tri-folding portable Bluetooth keyboard. Full size, mind you. You get a numpad included this bad boy. It's got the easy to carry 105 key tri-fold design and can also do multi-device Bluetooth connecting to different computers or different devices in case you want to bring a tablet along with you as well. It has a 210 milliamp hour battery, which allows for long battery life. And it weighs only 10.5 ounces, making it perfect for portability. And it has noise reduction with quiet keystrokes. And it's rather durable, capable of up to 100,000 times of folding in order to make sure that it's going to remain sturdy over the expected 13 years of regular usage. ProtoArc actually definitely has a great little compact keyboard for you to consider if you're looking to game, travel, or just have a full-size keyboard to take with you on the go. It folds up nicely, has a standby battery life of up to six months, and it's more than durable, so you can put it in wherever you need to go. Again, big thanks to ProtoArc for sponsoring today's video. Check out the XK01 at the link in the video description. Big thanks to them for sponsoring today's video. First patient. Patient states that his computer has been performing worse for no good reason. His frame rate was way higher earlier, and after changing nothing, it is now much lower, especially compared to a friend system who has the same specs. So let's figure out what's wrong. The patient does state that the GPU and CPU frequencies remain unchanged and that temperatures are fine. That is good information to have about whether or not your system is throttling. That is the first thing that I would take a look at on any patient is whether or not the CPU or the GPU is thermal throttling itself either due to bad airflow, due to poor thermal paste application, or due to some obstruction that may be in the case that weaseled its way in there, potentially even a weasel. Check your PCs for weasels regularly. The patient also provided a ton of detail on the temperatures, the frequencies, everything that's actually running in the system and cannot find a reason why his system actually might be slowing down. The patient says that his RAM is clocked at 3000 megahertz, although in the system it says it's 1499 and wonders if that is normal. That is completely normal because it stands for double data rate. So the 1500 megahertz that you're seeing is doubled because of the double data rate and you're getting 3000 mega transfers per second. That is totally fine. Additionally, my first inclination would be to think that potentially it might be game updates that are actually causing this or driver issues that are happening. Considering that it's happening across multiple games, probably not game updates, but it could also be a corrupted driver. So the issue that we're gonna encounter here is that this is a telehealth visit and I am not able to actually diagnose the PC in person because I would perform many troubleshooting steps, but I can provide a few things that the patient can do in order to see what's wrong with their computer, at least from a distance. One, check to make sure that no virus has wormed its way into your system's processing track, like digestive track, it's a joke. Two, ensure that there are no background applications that are parasitically consuming too many resources, e.g. Epic Games, which has been known, if you leave it open, to consume a lot of CPU power on AMD processors. This patient is actually on an Intel processor, but it could be worthwhile checking out. Three, check to make sure that there are no memory leaks that are taking place from specific commonly used applications. This is a little different than the parasitic resources thing because memory leaks are a bug that might require an uninstallation and reinstallation of a program, whereas the parasitic consumption is just something you can't get rid of. You actually have to close down Epic Game Store so it doesn't keep consuming the resources. Four, uninstall graphics drivers in safe mode with DDU and reinstall the latest drivers from NVIDIA's website. Getting the drivers flushed out of your registry using a program like DDU is gonna be the healthiest way to make sure that your GPU is staying fresh and up to date. And then number five, if all else fails, fresh reinstallation of Windows normally fixes any sort of software bug like this. And then number six, if steps one through five do not work, switch to Linux. Good for your heart, bad for your brain. 
Next patient. Patient states that he's been looking to upgrade his monitor and he's wondering if 4K is suitable for his needs or potentially should he hold off because there might be future updates coming down the pipeline with regards to monitor technologies. Patient also states that they do not have a system capable of running 4K at the moment and they would be not utilizing it to its fullest potential. Prescriptions. One's pretty easy. One, there are likely no big changes that are going to take place in the 4K 60 Hertz world anytime soon. Most of the improvements happening with monitors are on the OLED, mini LED, and refresh rate side of things. The 4K 60 monitor has kind of existed for a while now. And so the price drops that are gonna happen there aren't gonna be super substantial in my opinion over the next few years because it's already highly competitive due to being around for so long. You might get slightly better brightness, slightly better contrast ratios, but for the whole, the technology that's on 4K 60 Hertz at the base level is not gonna change too much. And prescription two is if you're not gonna have a system capable of driving 4K 60 right now, then maybe don't buy a monitor that's beyond your needs, but get a monitor that's more suited to where your system is now and then when you have the ability to upgrade to a beefier system you can move that initial monitor you purchased to a side monitor for discord for web browsing or lighter tasks while you're actually gaming and that way you have a dual monitor setup next patient patient states they're 53 and building a pc for the first time which proves you're never too old to be active in the PC community. They want an evaluation of their parts list, which is 650 pounds. I do not know UK very well as far as PC parts, but I will do my best to cross state lines and uh, prescribe where my medical license is not available. The prices appear to have changed because it is now 759 euro. Ryzen 5 5600X, Cooler Master Hyper 212, B550M DS3H, 16 gigs of RAM, Seagate Barracuda 4 terabyte drive, 512 gig NVMe drive, 6500 XT, and a 500 watt power supply. They state that they already have a 1080p monitor at 144 hertz, and so they don't need that for this upgrade, and that's actually a pretty decent spec. And they also indeed already have a case. Now, in order to drop price, I could potentially suggest that you get rid of the CPU cooler. However, considering the 212 Black is normally a very inexpensive cooler and it will look much better, I'm okay with that. The thing I would probably recommend against is getting a 512 gig SSD for 98 pounds and then a four terabyte hard drive. That could just be because I don't know the currency conversion or how expensive things are in the UK, but I would get a heavier duty NVMe drive, probably getting close to two terabytes and drop the hard drive completely. That will make sure that at 53, you don't have to waste more time waiting for games to load. Other than that, this spec is actually pretty good. The 5600X combined with the 6500 XT is a decent matchup. You even have room to go up to a 6600 XT if you save up for it later on. This patient has already gotten a lot of suggestions from other doctors who are more familiar with the UK pricing, so I will refrain from giving any sort of prescription here because I'm not British. Next patient. Patient S. Is AliExpress a reliable place to buy PC parts? The post has been deleted. The patient states that they live in Albania, so they do not have many options when it comes to purchasing PC parts from places like Amazon, and so they're wondering if AliExpress can make up the bulk of their purchases, and then they can do the last mile ordering in Albania itself. As somebody who's lived in South Africa and knows the difficulty of getting PC parts, I understand the question thoroughly. However, there are a lot of issues that can go wrong when ordering from AliExpress, but it doesn't mean that all hope is lost. If you find a reputable seller on AliExpress, you should be able to get PC parts you can trust. And that is the biggest worry that you would not be getting the parts that you are actually purchasing. You buy a Ryzen 3 5600X and what you actually received is a rebadged Ryzen 3 1200. And they make it look like it's a 5600X, but it's not actually. However, AliExpress does have a rating system very much like eBay, where you can make sure based on the companies that you're working with that you're getting the right parts because it's more of a marketplace where it depends on who is selling it to you rather than the parts itself. So there has to be a little bit more due diligence on the end user's part to make sure that you're getting the right parts. But if that's what your best option is and that's the best option for shipping, then I'm not necessarily against it. You just need to take extra caution. Protect it before you wreck it.
That's not good. Well, it's a good sex joke. Practice safe shopping. That works, right? Use protection before erection. Your computer. Next question. Patient states their GPU fans stop spinning. They just built a new PC and every time they power it on, the fans spin down. This is actually a very common one, a very easy one. And don't feel ashamed if you were worried about the same thing. It's right to get it checked out. I'm a wiener doctor. <laughs> Prescription, this is totally normal. Modern GPUs are made so that if they're under no slash minimal load, they don't need to turn on the fans. But if you game for more than four hours and fans still don't spin up, then consult a specialist. Next patient, patient states that they recently got a pre-built PC. Very dangerous. You never know what type of diseases they're carrying. <clears throat> patient states that they recently got a pre-built PC, went to bed, and when they woke up in the morning, their monitor would no longer connect to their graphics card. You have to be careful with your sleep schedule. They checked to make sure that the HDMI cable was plugged into the correct spot. They also made sure to make sure that the monitor was connected to the HDMI setting. So this is a very tricky one. In a normal scenario, if this was a fresh PC build, I would suggest to make sure that the HDMI is actually plugged into the graphics card and not the HDMI port that's actually on the back of your motherboard because that's a very common mix up for first time PC builders. I'm less likely to suggest that because the patient has been using this PC for over a week now. Prescription. One, turn off your PC using the power supply switch and then see if your monitor comes back on reboot. Which leads me to number two, check to make sure that your Windows sleep settings aren't actually corrupting your computer's ability to come back when you actually reuse the computer. I've actually had this happen where my PC worked fine for a time and then over time, the sleep slash hibernate settings on Windows got corrupted and made it so that I actually could never wake up my PC. It's actually something that plagued my wife's laptop for quite some time and it just requires a fresh reinstallation of Windows. Number three, if it is not software, I would check the hardware. Since this is a pre-built PC, they are known to move around internally during shipping. So check all of your power cables. Make sure they're firmly installed into the graphics card, the motherboard, and to the CPU power. Also check things like your RAM installation that the technician who built the PC actually put the DIMM slots in completely and all the way. And then also check on your SSD or hard drives to make sure that they are firmly installed because that could have come loose over the week of use, you hitting the table, moving it ever so slightly. Some cables that were already loose but connected actually could have become fully connected even if it was only at night. Well, it turns out my shift has ended. That's going to be it for the PC Doctor this week. Don't forget to submit your PC Doctor questions over to our subreddit at reddit.com forward slash r forward slash UFD tech. We would love to help you out with your computer.